Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of a Thriving in a Chaotic and uh, Uncertain Times uh, through our uh, real estate market. We're so excited to have you all with us today. You know, one of the things that I've been saying when we're doing these presentations is that you first have to arrive in order to thrive uh, in this market, and you all have arrived. So first of all, thank you all for being here. I know you're completely and totally learning based, and uh, this just goes to show another thing that we're going to be able to add to your real estate resume, and we're going to help you guys get your database cleaned up, ready for the season, and start your communications today. And helping me do that are my special guests. I have uh, Bob Wallsmith and Randy Lemus on the call with me. You guys should see those fine gentlemen up on the top panel, side panel. We'll call it the Brady panel, even though there's only three <laughs> of us uh, at the time. Uh, but we can look up, look down, see where everyone is. We're so happy to uh, hear uh, from you all, so uh, glad to see you. And um, Bob, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you give us a quick introduction of yourself? Uh, tell us a little bit about you and uh, maybe why you're here and what you're going to uh, contribute. Well, Kevin, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Bob Walsmith, Jr. I'm a realtor with Coldwell Banker in Santa Barbara, California. And I've been a Brevity platform uh, participant for a couple of years. And um, I'm, I'm here to give back because what Ben Kinney and everyone at Brevity has done for me and for all of us in the last couple of years that I've been part of this is to give us as much information and tools as possible to help us succeed. And especially now with this difficult time we're facing in this country, in this world, I think it's incumbent upon us to double down, to take every advantage that we can. And I've been taking advantage of every webinar possibility through Brevity. And when I was asked to participate in this, I was honored and very glad to participate to try to help out anybody else that I can. Thank, thank you, Bob. And as you mentioned, you know, this is a industry, industry specific training, like everybody can take away uh, from what we're going to talk to you guys about and then incorporate that in, in your learning. And uh, Randy, thank you for being here and volunteering your time as well. Tell us a little bit about yourself and <coughs> why you're here, Randy. Miss, let me see, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Sure. Okay, good. Yeah, so yeah, my name is Randy Lemus. I'm a real estate agent here in uh, St. Paul, Minneapolis. We call it the Twin Cities area. Um, going on, I actually, April 1st, um, uh, April Fool's Day is my fifth year anniversary in the business. And um, not too shortly after coming into this business, I realized the importance of having a database and then actually having a, a technology solution that served me rather than me trying to serve it. So I found uh, Brivity shortly after coming into the business. I've been with uh, Brivity. I like to say I'm a card carrying member since 2017, back when we issued these uh, metal, awesome metal cards. Um, and um, so I've just been really enjoying all the information that Brivity has been providing for us. And quite frankly, the system is, in my opinion, second to none. So I'm happy to be here to share uh, whatever I can um, offer for you folks. Super. All right. Let's, uh, let's talk about what our promises is. So here's my promise. My promise is that I uh, will hopefully, I'm going to fulfill my promise by the end of the call because my promise is making sure that I brought two qualified individuals to talk to you guys about spring cleaning your database and making sure that you're staying in contact uh, with your uh, people because the reality is, is that <clears throat> we're in the relationship business and if we're not keeping our relationship strong, uh, we are either uh, destroying them or we're just not nurturing them. So we want to be sure that we're communicating with our database in a super positive way and keeping it clean. And I feel like these two gentlemen are going to help us do that. My other promise is we're going to be on time. I'm going to make sure that we get through all of our content and we bring you all quality, um, exciting content uh, throughout the next uh, 55 minutes. That's my promise. Uh, Randy, do you have a promise to the audience? 
Yeah, I guess my promise is to share um, the information that I have locked up into this cranium that I've acquired over my five years of being in the business, but certainly over my 20 plus years of being a manager and a leader within the various businesses that I've been a part of. And um, certainly being open beyond just to take to to today is to sharing then afterwards. And you'll find me um, posting frequently within the Brivity uh, Facebook page too. So cool. Uh, Bob, you got a promise for us? I do. It's it it's very much aligned with what Randy said. Um, I made a commitment that when I first started uh, listening to these webinars, I made a promise to Ben Kinney that I would give back as much as I could because it seems like he and everyone, Bob Stewart, you, everybody at Brivity has been so kind and forthcoming and giving. So I make that promise as well. And if somebody wants to contact me after this, I'll put up my contact information at the end. Please feel free to write, to call, whatever. Um, I'll help as much as I can. And uh, it's always nice to have more than one perspective. So I'm sure Randy and I have, we're successful. But we'll be get, we have different points of view and different ways that we go about our business, but we're both successful. And there's many ways to be successful. So my philosophy is take in as much as you can from experts and then do what works for you best. Cool. All right. So that's our promises. Uh, you have a promise, folks. We're going to ask uh, that you take two to three things away from uh, on this call that you're going to put into action. And we'll ask you at the end of the call uh, what uh, you have taken away. So please. Uh, <coughs> and let us know if you have any questions throughout the entire presentation. All right. Here's what we will be talking about today with our experts. We're going to talk about cleaning up. Uh, your database, I noticed that you have clean up in, in quotations because cleaning up um, does have a lot to do with uh, getting rid of information, updating information. So we're going to talk about what clean up means and what that means to both Randy, Bob, and then, of course, we'll uh, come to the audience if you have any input. We're also going to talk about what this can do. Is this an opportunity to reconnect when we are cleaning our database? Um, and is this going to help us? rebuild our relationships. As I mentioned, we are in the relationship business, and if we are not maintaining those relationships, if we are not uh, keeping um, in touch with our contacts in the ways that um, they require to be communicated to, uh, we might be failing those relationships. So this is a great opportunity to rebuild our relationships. Um, you've heard Gary Keller say it, you've heard Ben Kinney say it, we have a whole gold mine um, of opportunity in our own backyard. We're going to explain exactly what that means and how to fully take advantage of that uh, backyard gold mine. And um, we're going to explain the term garbage in, garbage out. Um, what is it? Uh, Gigu, I think is the way that uh, it's pronounced in, in the technology world. Uh, that's a technology term and it, it is true when it comes to a database. And number six is something that we're probably going to be um, uh, discovering throughout the entire presentation, and that is ideas for action, things that you can put into action today uh, that you can start to uh, take advantage of so that you get your database ready for uh, the season. When things hit, you're going to be ready to hit the ground with a clean database. You gentlemen have any input or any additions and or things you want to add to our uh, agenda for today? No, I, I think we can expound on those topics and I'm sure that that will, that will take up the time allotted that we have. Super. All right. Well, let's get started. Um, let's talk about cleaning up your database. And this graphic, I think, is, is pretty solid to what a lot of our databases look like. I mean, we have the content, we have the information, um, and we have it somewhere. We just don't have it in organized and there may be a lot of information that's missing from our, our database. So can uh, you guys talk to me, and I'll, uh, Bob, I'll start with you. Um, mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about uh, your approach in, on your database, especially right now uh, when you, it seems that you might have some more uh, time on your hands to, to manage it. Sure, Kevin. What I did was I went through, and thankfully with Brivity, we have what's called tags. So I went through and tagged and pulled up everybody that was not a tag for a local realtor. And so I went through and I've, I've almost all the way through, 
I'm going through name by mm -hmm. name, making sure that I have their contact information properly included. And that means uh, email, phone number, hopefully an address, whether it be business or home or both, and that I've got them tagged properly, that I have them on the proper action plan. In other words, action plan is to make sure that I connect with them at certain times in certain ways, i.e. text messaging, uh, phone calls, emails. So I just, I want to make sure that I have everybody properly identified within that database. And to me, that's what I mean by clean up. Yeah, I'm, I heard you say something that was interesting is you you went through everybody and you separated out your affiliates, mm -hmm. right? Outside of your affiliates, every single other person you are plucking and you're going to go through the details of, of those people. Exactly, exactly. I have the time to do that now. And my goal is to when Governor Newsom here in California says we can leave, that I've done everything I can to make sure that my business is going to spring forward. Um, not to be three weeks out after we can get back to work and I can go back to my off physical office and say, oh, I wish I would have done this while I was home. So that's very important to me. I wake up every morning and uh, make sure that I get that done for the day. And at the end of the day, when I put my head on the pillow, I've said I've done everything I can today. And that's really important to me. So you're, you're getting ready for a, a, a sort of a launch date. Um, Absolutely. So, and I like that spring forward. It, it falls right into our spring cleaning uh, yeah. theme and all that. So, yeah, it's true. We're going to spring forward twice uh, in this season. Uh, Randy, what's your, what are your thoughts? What's your input on, your, <clears throat> on how you're approaching uh, your database right now for your cleanup? Yeah, so <clears throat> my database has a fair number of people, and I'll say I have a couple of different databases that serve different purposes. The way I look at Brivity as my main as my main hub as a database is different than how I view my say my Mojo database, which I use for sort of mass uh, uh, com communications, if you will. And um, I created a, a slide deck because there were questions about people and how they connect Mojo to Brivity. And, you know, I, and I've heard um, Ben and Bob over the years say, um, don't turn in, turn your uh, Brivity into this massive waste dump of a place where everybody goes. So, um, so I've had to sort of, in my mind, kind of help segment where and what is in my Brivity database and figure out where they came from and then as best I can try to align or assign sort of a value to those. So really then the biggest part from a number one perspective from a cleanup for me then is to quite literally get rid of trash and then to properly um, mark people, are they hot, are they nurture, are they watch, and really kind of figure that part of it out. Um, and then what I really want to do is sort of um, add up the people that are in the database so then I can allocate my time appropriately to those that have either a higher conversion or mean more um, to me um, from an overall value perspective. And so for those people, I go a little bit deeper. Um, not only do I do the name, address, phone number, email, I make sure that I have Mr. and Mrs. as much as I possibly can, or, you know, making sure that I have those couple connections, relationships um, identified. I'll even, I, I've even gone so far as to take the property that they do have, my database is a lot of sellers or homeowners, and then identify um, how many beds, how many bath, how many square footage, what's the approximate price range. Um, and then from that, it makes my database a lot um, more usable because one day I might be talking to somebody who's looking for a home um, and it occurred to me I talked to somebody who had that kind of home. Now, how do I find that person? So, um, so then I decided decided to really start to segment um, what they have, and then break down across the metro and such. Um, and then, you know, going deeper into that segmentation, like I say, is just sort of an ongoing uh, part of what I'm doing within my own database. Uh, there's a lot of digging in in, in there. Um, 
I heard and I, I, I picked up, uh, there was a lot that, but I picked up a few things. One you, uh, that I thought was interesting, you said to, that you use different systems for different purposes. And I, I feel like that's, that's a great message that all of our audience can take out of it. It doesn't matter uh, what system you use, one, you should have a system and it's totally acceptable and appropriate to have different systems and, and find the systems that work for you. And then I, I, another thing I picked out is that you you have a system that allows you to filter out those um, buyers, those sellers, those specific things that you're finding important or, or super relevant um, that moves them closer or, or further away from being the ones that you want to really nurture into mm -hmm. buying and selling. Is that, is that right? Yeah, yeah. So over the years... Um, I, I got I cut my teeth in this business five years ago on outbound cold call telephone prospecting. So I'm calling three lines. Um, somehow along the way, I stumbled across Ben Kinney pitching for Mojo. And I'm like, oh, that's fantastic. So I dove headlong into Mojo and I've been using Mojo ever since. Um, and then over time, you realize that, you know, certain systems have certain limitations. Um, Brivity has, you know, since I've been a card carrying member since 2017, has since added a single line dialer and has added a whole lot more functionality to that, which is perfect for that one on one follow up and keeping up um, with that one person. But for mass communication, mass outreach, where I'm calling a thousand people a day, you know, Brivity doesn't exactly work for that case. And so so that's where Mojo does. So the question then ultimately became, how do I add them into that system? And what I found over my years of prospecting anyway, is that people will say one thing and they really mean another based upon the follow-up that you'll schedule. So then what I started to do is export them into a predictive analytics system. And then I created a grid that said, my analysis said that this person was highly likely to move, so I gave them a one. The predictive analytics said that they're a medium likelihood to move, so that I just randomly came up with, that's worth three. So then all total, that's four points for that individual. So I came up with a ranking scoring system. And then based upon that, I said, all right, if these people are worth two points, which would be the most likely to transact, that means I should really spend a whole lot of money on those people in order to get them to be nurtured and convert ultimately. Whereas if I talk to them and they're kind of squishy about their timeline, squishy about where they're gonna go, and the predictive analytics said, yeah, they're really not a, a high likelihood to sell, well, they're still worth something to my database because I talked to a human being, they answered the telephone, but they're worth less not as humans, of course, but worth less in terms of monetary value in my own database. Okay. So it's been a, it's been a multiple years evolution, and I'm still kind of working that part of it out. But yeah, I, I felt like you know a, a strategic approach would help me spend my dollars more wisely. Yeah. Now, Bob, you're you know you're using statuses, you're using tags, and and those mm -hmm. things that um, is it, it may not be a, an algorithm that we're following, but we're still getting the result of determining like who our contacts are. While we're cleaning out our database, we're looking for opportunity. Right? And mm -hmm. an opportunity may show up and it, it may not in everybody, but that's that's really our, our goal is to see how close we can get them. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Let's talk about that now. We cleaned up our database. We're cleaning it up. Um, and now we're Probably, I'm hoping we're finding ourselves while we're doing this, we're actually reconnecting uh, with people. Now, during this reconnection time, um, do you all, do you, do you, uh, and I'll start with you now, Bob, do you contact everybody um, that, that you come across in this reconnection, or how do you determine who you're calling, who you're emailing? Like, what does that look like to you? Well, yes, Kevin, first of all, I am contacting everyone. But I think that it's dangerous how we reconnect with these people. Yeah. Um, I think if we come from being a salesman, for lack of a better term, that's extremely dangerous. People don't like to be sold anyway. And in today's environment, that's multiplied tenfold, I think. Um, so what I did was I, I was on a webinar with Bob and Ben, and they were going over action plans or auto plans, I think. And uh, 
I saw one that said COVID-19. And so I inquired about that. And what I did was I made up my own plan. It started with a text message. And then an hour later, it followed it up with a um, email. And it basically just said, hi, I'm, I'm thinking of you and of all my clients, my friends, my partners, just wanted to reach out and hope you and your family are doing well. So it was two sentences. It was three, I think, in the email. And I, I received 33% of them were returned with responses. And I heard from now four people that I had never spoken with that had gone on my website, looked at properties or just gone on there and have never responded to a phone call, an email, a text message. So everything I send out now starts from how are you doing? It comes from contribution. My father, who I learned everything that I know about business, he was middle management at Pepsi. He said, if you start from contribution, you can be as greedy as you want to be. And I take that to mean that if you if you care about people, there's nothing wrong with getting a lot of business. And he also told me, he said that no matter how stupid someone is, they are smart enough to figure out if you're trying to pull one over on them. So if you're being insincere, they're going to figure that out and they don't want to have anything to do with you. So getting back to the main point, come from contribution, care about people. And then people will want to talk to you. Now, most people aren't going to want to buy and sell real estate right now. That's that's first and foremost. We have to understand that. But there are some people that need to, whether it's job relocation, whether it, whatever it is. Yeah. So we can help those people easily enough. But what I'm trying to do is be strategic and let these people know that as soon as this shelter at home policy is lifted, let's go. So that's that's where I'm coming from, and that's what I'm trying to uh, tell everyone is come from contribution first. Nice. That that's that's outstanding, and and you know that that um, auto plan 33% is unheard of in our industry. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's a really high uh, open rate and, and response rate. Your open rate was probably even much higher. Uh, if you're seeing a, a response rate, and today we we have to we have to know that if we are going to send out, and Bob, you're probably experienced. This. If you're going to send out a hundred text messages, you better be ready to respond to 89 of them, mm -hmm. because we're, we're asking people how they're doing, you know, what, what and and and, and um, they're going to respond because they are um, a lot of people are lonely, a lot of people are bored. A lot of people um, want to let people know how they're doing, especially when someone asks. And I, we found that <clears throat> I did a couple of these webinars. We had one called uh, "Change Your uh, Message, Change Your Business," and you know, it's just a, it, it's a, it's an important time to make sure that we're saying uh, the right thing at the right time, and um, and and staying in touch with our you know, with our contacts. And when we, if we're going to ask, is there something I can do, then you better be ready to do something. So let's, mm -hmm. let's um, not make an offer unless we're prepared <laughs> to, to fulfill that offer. Randy, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think that um, I know. So again, I started here in this business. I was looking through some old invoices not too long ago and I came across my very first mojo uh, invoice happened to be two months into the business so somehow I stumbled into that and it really felt natural and comfortable for me um, and if I'm going to be not so humble I'm all right at it, right? And I always had sort of a negative viewpoint of marketing. Um, over the last year and a half, two years, marketing has really become sort of a, a lot more to the forefront of how I'm growing my business or will continue to grow my business. And so one of the mentors that I have in the marketing field or space, he says that there's three M's that you need to pay attention to, and that's media, well, m start with market, who are you talking to? Our case, obviously, homeowners and home uh, buyers, if you will. Um, media, the channel or how we're going to distribute that, um, how we're going to talk to those people. And then message. And message for me has really changed. I had a big promotion all set up for March. 
uh, it was supposed to be a um, St. Patrick's Day because it fell on the 17th right in the middle of the month. And, you know, quite frankly, um, that whole thing went out the window because talking about the luck of the Irish um, from a, a marketing promotional perspective was Great not point. appropriate. So yeah. really had to shift gears in terms of the message. I just sent out my last piece to this uh, campaign um, and it was very, very different than what I originally um, set when I was planning it up all in uh, February. It really had to change um, yeah. because it's just not um, it wasn't appropriate to the times. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So that's a big part of, uh, of reconnecting is uh, making sure that we're saying the right thing at the right time and, and not saying the wrong things. Mm -hmm. Great. Amazing. All right. Well, we did talk about that, Bob. You're trying to steal your own thunder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, what I'm, what I'm starting every conversation with is, uh, especially if it's an email or a text message, it says, I hope this finds you and your family staying strong, safe, and healthy. Um, that's the only thing that I care about right now because I realize that I'm going to get business and the things I'm doing right now are going to get me a lot of business when we come out of this. So I only care from about people. And another item that I'm using heavily is my blog through Brivity, through my website. Um, in, the, in the past, I have posted or tried to post on Sundays and Tuesdays. And Tuesdays, I would post something. It's a small business partner Tuesday spotlight. It's about local businesses. Well, what I've done is I've, I'm doing that on Tuesdays, but I'm also doing that on Wednesdays and Thursdays. And on Sundays, my blog post is about last two Sundays is uh, virtual um, tours. In other words, tours of the local zoo, of the local flower gardens. Um, of the uh, businesses that are open are doing business, businesses that are not open but are still selling gift cards. So I'm trying to be a source for the community to help them in that way. And again, that comes from contribution. There's, and the small business partners that I'm spotlighting are friends of mine and the people that I do business with and that I invite to my quarterly networking events so I'm trying to help them as much as possible because we're all small business owners. So the more that we can help each other, the better off we all are going to be. That's what I mean by coming from contribution. Okay, so I, I want to break that down a little bit. You have a a blog uh, with mm -hmm. your um, Brevity website. So mm -hmm. a lot of people here hopefully have a blog with whatever products that they're using. And then uh, in that blog, you are creating content that is specific to the local community specific to local businesses and that's mm -hmm. something you've done you were doing before um any of the the, the covid stuff it, but Correct. now it's like you're focusing now more on uh, businesses that still need to be supported and people mm -hmm. can come to one single place in order to get all that information is that right that's correct and then after i post the blog post i'm able to share it on uh facebook yeah, and then I also do a post. I share the same. I don't share the same thing, but the same content is put on my Instagram feed, and so I'm getting a lot of people, and especially with the small businesses, because if I tag them, then they're noticing and they're contacting me saying thank you very much. Uh, so I've really, I've really tried to expand that because, you know, financially my wife and I are okay. We're we're good at home, but a lot of people live paycheck to paycheck. And especially if you work in a restaurant, there's so many GoFundMe pages for local restaurants. <clears throat> and these people simply can't make a living. So anything that I can do to help them is what I'm trying to do at this point. And I would imagine it'd be fairly simple to just share that link with them as well and say, hey, here's something we're doing uh, for you guys. Uh, share it as well and, mm -hmm. and bring, you know, continue to bring um, information. I, I love that. That's really smart. So uh, just take that away, folks, is that you create a single place for people to go and um, and, and gain information. And, and the information you're providing is local information. It's local business information. So it's supporting your community. And that I feel like really truly can help make you the local expert when um, a lot of this is cleared up because now you have 
you know these businesses, you know what they're doing, and you've already um, had a good introduction to them. That's really smart. Uh, Randy, tell me a little bit about some things that you guys are, are looking at or doing or have been doing and how it's working yeah. for you. Yeah, so, you know, the the concept of coming from contribution is is easy so long as you have an idea of what you can contribute. If you're clueless on that, you need to step back and say, well, what value can I bring? And I... Um, I've heard the term called sales breath. And uh, when you go to talk to somebody, if all you're focused on is the sale or the immediate transaction, no matter how hard you try, or no matter what words you use, that is gonna come through, that's gonna translate, and again, the term sales breath. And so I think for real estate agents that might be on this phone, on this call here, um, you know, you really want to kind of step back and, and and see where you might be able to fit in to somebody's life, into your community, and what value can you actually bring. And that, that can be kind of hard to get your arms around. Um, and, you know, if you don't already have that, you might try to find somebody you can latch on to in order to um, co-opt that idea or concept, but really start with what you're passionate with. I would also say that Generally speaking, I have found as my career has progressed from over these last five years, it's significantly easier to come from contribution if I'm doing well at home, I'm doing well financially, and I'm doing well in terms of my business health overall, my database health overall. Because I, uh, one example, I had a client, we shopped, we looked for houses and we made past inspection and or pretty darn close to inspection and he just changed his mind. And quite honestly, I was upset about that. This was a few years ago. I was upset about that because honestly, I was needing that paycheck, right? That was coming within 30 some odd days. And what I decided was that I'm just gonna let it go and cut this guy loose and you know represent him as a fiduciary as best I possibly could and what ended up happening was um, 30 days later he ended up coming back and ended up buying a way more expensive house and uh, shortly thereafter ended up selling another house so I ended up with significantly more income because I decided to let it go because that was what's best for him, right? And so what I've decided then is for me to really be able to come from a place of contribution, it's more beneficial for me to ensure that I have a big enough pipeline, that I have a big enough database, so that way as people's needs come and go and as things change, as they are right now, obviously, I can say, what is what is best for you? And I can really mean that, not because I'm looking for the transaction or the income that might come from that transaction, but because I genuinely care about what is truly best for them. And so I find that, you know, we can do things sort of at a, um, a global, uh, national, state, local level, but the contribution, I think, can oftentimes start with just the individual and that individual being in our own databases. Yeah, that's 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 smart. And and uh, I I love that you said you don't come from contribution with things that you're not passionate about. Mm -hmm. We can't say, hey, Bob did this and that's cool and it worked for Bob and I I'm going to go do that because <laughs> it worked for Randy or Kimberly or David or all the other uh, amazing experts that I've had uh, over the last two weeks on my calls. What I want you to do is to stop and think, like you said, stop and think about what are those things that I am passionate about, because you will um, have so much more progression from that passion, uh, because it's something that you truly believe in, and it'll be so much easier to um, to come from that contribution. Wouldn't you agree? When something you're passionate about, absolutely. Right. You you can't you can't teach passion. You can teach just about anything, but you can't teach passion, and that's the kind of people that I want to surround myself with, both in my life, personal life and business life, passionate people just do a better job. And one one other comment I wanted to make about our database and coming from contribution is, I suggest that everybody have every other real estate agent in their 
area multiple listing service in their database and reach out to them. I have reached out to 76 <laughs> other agents in this area that I'm friends with um, just to find out how they're doing. And again, it's coming from contribution, but down the road six months or a year, if I'm in a multiple offer situation and I'm up against an agent and that agent has never corresponded with the agent that's listing the house if I'm representing the buyer. Um, and that agent remembers that I talked to them during COVID-19 and said, how are you and your family doing? I'm going to have a better chance of getting that deal accepted. And I hope that doesn't sound too self-centered, but I think it's important. Again, it's, if you come from contribution, you can be as greedy as you want to be. So I think that's important to have those agents in your database and stay in touch with them. And also, the other reason why I do that is I cannot use my local multiple listing service um, website to send out a mass email. But what I did was I downloaded all those names and put them in my Brevity database. So I had an off-market property and I sent out a mass email to all of them that way. So again, it's another way that you can use the Brevity platform. Yeah. All right. Any other thoughts on uh, coming from contribution? I would just say uh, one of my favorite quotes, I'm trying to get it verbatim, but uh, for some reason my internet's being slow right now. So in any case, it's from Zig Ziglar and it says, you can get it, everything that you want out of this life so long as you're willing to help others get what they want. Mm -hmm. And um, that's paraphrased, but, but you know, I really feel like if you take the heart the true heart of a servant, then, um, you know, all the other things kind of tend to fall in line. Now, it might not be what I originally intended um, of what that alignment looks like, but I think ultimately the journey is certainly a lot better that way. Yeah. And, and um, Bob, one of the things that I'd, I'd like to just kind of follow up on it with other agents in, in your world, Mm -hmm. One of the things you could do is is share the knowledge that you're learning, share these webinars, share the different opportunities that you've experienced that mm -hmm. they might have. A, for example, everyone's going to get a copy of this presentation if you feel like it was completely worth your hour and would help someone else share mm -hmm. that link with them just so that you can um, continue the continue the industry knowledge and help them learn some new skills. And like you said, when you're working with each other across, across the table, it's a much better conversation, much better environment. Absolutely, absolutely. And then, you know, I, I, how, how did you put it? You can be as selfish as you want if you come from contribution to that? Yeah, my dad said, if you come from yeah. contribution, you can be as greedy as you want to be. I mean, that's, it's, that's a rough comment, but it, it, it's, it is true because what we're all doing right now is we're building these new skills that we're going to be able to take with us into this uh, new environment, into these new opportunities. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're we are taking a little bit advantage of, of that. Um, so throughout this opportunity, uh, it sounds like we're rebuilding relationships. And Bob, tell me, what do you think? How do you think long term working with these businesses, for example, uh, is going <clears> to <throat> is going to help you um, with uh, relationships that you were currently working with uh, before? Well, I think it, it helps you stay top of mind. Uh, I know in my area, I don't know about Randy's, we have 1,167 licensed realtors, okay? And that's in 50 square miles. So granted, about half of them do business, but there's a lot of real estate agents. So people have choices on who they can work with. And we have limited inventory. And we have home prices from... 357,000 to there's one property that's $126 million. Um, so people have choices. So what I want to do is, again, come from contribution, be on top of mind, and just let these people know that I care about them. I have quarterly events that I have at local businesses. I cater them. I pay for that. Sometimes I have sponsors. I have... I usually have wine and some good food, and I invite clients, business partners, what I call concierge partners, which on my website are businesses that my wife and I use. So I invite them every quarter, and I get up and I talk about business for about 90 seconds. And basically, I, know, I call them now a gathering of friends. And so it's important to me 
to stay in touch with these people, A, because I like them, B, I have fun with them, I want to support them and their business, and then down the road, hopefully I get business. Now, I've there is so much business going on at my events and built through these building these relationships and people will come up to me and they say, well, you know, Bob, I'm sorry, I haven't given you a referral in six months or eight months. I said, that's okay. My price point's a little bit higher than your chocolate company or your travel industry business or things like that. So I don't look at it as that I'm looking for business every time I have these meetings. So the relationships, they're long-term. This is a marathon, not a sprint. And, um, I think it's important to view it that way. And it's not, it's not, I'm not looking to have business in four days. If I can build up a relationship with someone and in six months they call me, which has happened just recently. And the guy said, my superintendent of my construction company wants to sell his house. Bob, I set up a meeting for you at four o'clock on Thursday. Can you make it? So that's, that's how I rebuild these relationships. And how it relates to my database. If I haven't talked to somebody for a while, especially now, the first thing out of my mouth, if they answer the phone is, hey, Jerry, this is Bob Walsmith Jr. with Coldwell Banker. Hey, I'm sorry I haven't been in touch with you for a while, but it's really important for me to call you now and see how you're doing. And if they bring up real estate, I'll talk about it. If not, I don't talk about it. And then I, after the call is over, I put in my notes, talk to them today. This is what we talked about. I call them again in 30 days, 45 days. So that's how I'm rebuilding these relationships and keeping the current relationships I have ongoing. What are your thoughts on um, the future of that uh, meeting? Let's say that that meeting is going to be in another month and people aren't necessarily going to want to get together. Um, is that something you feel like you could do um, remotely? You could do through Zoom or have you, uh, you know, like give me some ideas on what you guys are thinking about long term with the vents like that um you know kevin i haven't really given it that much thought because i have them quarterly i had i typically have one in february but yeah. i didn't i had it at the beginning of march and so that would mean that i would have one in may well obviously that's not going to happen so i could have a virtual happy hour um and that's something i might consider but um I haven't gone into great depth about that, but I'm looking yeah. forward to getting back to the old old ones. That mm -hmm. might have to wait till September or October until it's safe. But um, that's a good possibility that I, because <laughs> most of the people I invite love good wine and I've had it at wineries, uh, wine tasting rooms a few times. People really yeah. like that. So I'm sure that I could get the uh, <clears throat> one or two wineries to to chime in and say, let's all open a bottle of a winery X or Y. So um, do they I, deliver I think, in the area right now? <laughs> they do, and they're actually delivering for free to the county. The one, the one winery where I, where I go all the time. My wife and I go wine tasting every Friday afternoon at this one wine wine tasting room in downtown. Um, so they are. It's five dollars shipping anywhere in California and free delivery within Santa Barbara County. So they're getting very creative about that. Sounds like there's your answer. You just send everybody that you want to attend a bottle of wine, and they have to promise to be a part <laughs> of that. Or pop that sucker up. It's a win-win, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Super, Randy. What are your What are your thoughts on 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 rebuilding and, and some of the things that you're doing and uh, plan on in the future? Yeah. So I will say uh, to Bob's point. Uh, establishing a better connection with the um, with the vendors, service providers, uh, partners, it was on the 2020 roadmap. Um, it was actually more towards quarter one and two, but things as they unfolded, sort of um, other things took priority. But that being said, um, as soon as I started hearing about these lockdowns coming down, across the country, it just really struck me that it would be a prime opportunity to establish that kind of relationship. My intention is to establish sort of a, um, a business owner mastermind, if you will, where it's held on sort of a monthly type of basis, maybe uh, eight to 10 times per year, um, one hour, hour and a half, meet at a coffee shop, which is not really practical right now, but actually, you know, I find that this, this, 
this uh, circumstance that we find ourselves in actually might make facilitating these kinds of things easier because rather than trying to find the place and get everybody together and have attendance be sporadic you know these kinds of meetings are easier now and um, whether I mean it's always been easy but whether or not people were interested and whether or not it was something that people felt like they could actually take on is it's really not if you're a business owner is not an option now you have to do this if you want to connect with other people in this sort of platform or sort of way so yeah. that was on sort of on my radar uh, for this year uh, other things kind of took a higher priority um, that being said as far as rebuilding relationships you know it's really just again just coming from um, uh, curiosity and asking questions hey how are you doing because the reality is I know within my database um, I've had conversations over the years with people I mean sometimes especially in the way I've gotten business in my own pipeline at this point it's been cold and we go from zero to 60 over the course of multiple years in some cases um, sometimes I'm always surprised where I call somebody randomly and they say, yes, I'm thinking of selling my house. I have an appointment next week with them. We get them under contract, and 30, 40 some odd days later, we're at the closing table. Those are rare cases, but that does obviously happen. But the reality is you just really need to sort of just think about what are they actually needing. And I think it's also our fiduciary responsibility as much as we want to sort of say sales is not appropriate there are people who do need to sell. And so for us to then reassure them that it's actually, depending on where you are in the country, not a horrible time to sell. And I've used you know, Bellingham and, and the Seattle area as sort of an example of it being sort of the epicenter of what has transpired in our country. It's shifted now more towards New York, but certainly for a short period of time, it was very hot in that area. But, you know, the feedback in the news coming out of that part of the country was homes are still selling and they're selling oftentimes in multiple offers if they're priced right and look good. Right. And so um, I just put my house on the market two weeks ago and we sold it in the weekend with uh, multiple offers and showings that we had to finally just say enough is enough because we want to sell and we're moving on and so um, you just have to do it in a way that's not so salesy um, and transparent and honest like here's what you can expect here's my concerns with where we are right now I just had a conversation where we have a house coming on on this Thursday and the question was do you want to launch the house this Thursday or do you want to go next Thursday? And he asked me, Tom asked me, what do you think, Randy? Should we do it this Thursday or next Thursday? And I'm like, quite, quite frankly, here's what I'd say. And I kind of laid out the, the situation as I see it, ultimately let him make the choice that he's most comfortable with, but just clearly lay out what the pros and cons are. And so um, I think that kind of stuff um, might cost me short-term business but it might gain me long-term business, if, if, if anything, right? But, you know, ultimately, like I say, if you have a big enough uh, pipeline and your database is good, you're talking to a bunch of people, you can let some people go um, if that's what's best for them, if they're not quite ready. And you can do that honestly and say, hey, I'm here for you whenever you are ready. So, yeah. Yeah. We're going to dive into that, like, uh, deeply, I think, in the next category. But one of the things that you mentioned is, you know, we, we have the opportunity to communicate with people through our mobile device. Um, you could connect with uh, people through a Zoom call now. Um, you know, Randy, it was almost impossible for me to get someone like you and Bob and, and, and uh, you know, the, all of the other guests that I've had. Uh, it would have been very difficult to get them all on a webinar at the same time. Now it's more simple because everybody's in the same place. So what I've done is I've taken advantage of the opportunity that they're all in the same place. They're looking for ways of expelling their energy and their expertise because they're not able to be out there in the office or doing their own um, training and so forth. So if this is really where, where it's at is, is connecting with people, as you guys mentioned, where they are, um, con using the different types of communications to uh, reestablish those relationships and Pick up the phone, give some people a call that didn't used to pick up the uh, phone before. It's um, really amazing on 
um, the, what has transpired as far as how people are, are continuing to communicate. So try it all, right? Stay in touch, mm -hmm. rebuild relationships and uh, do it through coming from contribution. Um, let's talk about your backyard gold mine. What do we, what do we mean by that? When we talk about a backyard uh, gold mine, um, Bob, do you find, have you found any gold in your backyard lately? <clears throat> well, I, I think it's, I'm probably just like, as guilty as everybody else that I haven't done as good a job with my database as I should. And this time has allowed me to do that. And I've discovered a few people that have fallen through the cracks and whether they be sellers that didn't have a market report or uh, buyers that didn't have a proper listing um, report or um, just people that there was no task, no call. And uh, so this time has allowed me to do that. And again, as I mentioned somewhat at the beginning, my goal is to when we come out of this and I can go back to my nice office um, downtown that I have this all set up, that it's that it's ready to go. And uh, so that's that's my gold mine. And I mentioned that I believe this is a hundred to two hundred thousand uh, dollar vacation. So that's a pretty good chunk of gold right there, I think. Yeah, that's outstanding. And I think you you know you hit it on the head is that we have the time to go through and make sure that what we have is um, you know is is uh, is dug through because we have to really kind of pick through. Um, that you know, gold, when we're mining, we don't want to just blast uh, with a, one single message. We kind of want to pick through it and, and see what's uh, what's available. Randy, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, sorry, the postman was coming in, and so I think I'll <laughs> make sure somebody got him. But um, <clears throat> so the 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 backyard gold mine is funny. I heard Ben talk about this for years now and uh you know he was talking about uh ben kinney and such or um gary keller and such and you know ben is sort of uh visually graphic in some of his um conversations but or the way he talks from time to time but he was talking about in your backyard um how you might also have some turds back there right and so you have to move through some of the turds in order to get to the gold and um I think that is that's the opportunity, right? Uh, depending on where you are, quite frankly, um, when I first started, my 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 backyard wasn't very big. Now, after prospecting for a number of years, my my backyard is um, is big enough. Uh, it's certainly not. I had uh, the benefit of being able to interview um, uh, Lance Loken uh, a couple weeks ago from Houston, Texas, and he said his data bank, as he referred to it, had something near uh, 70,000 people in it, right? So when you have a data bank that that's that large, you're gonna find um, a larger number of gold nuggets there, though the percentages might be a little bit different. So you just really have to sort of figure out what, um, what you're looking for and establish those, um, those numbers based upon that. Now, um, this kind of, let me just take a look here. I want to see our agenda we have. So here's the backyard gold mine. So here's one thing that I just recently did. So I was able to go through my various different um, databases. I put everybody into a giant hopper and then I started segmenting. I talked about it a little bit ago. I started segmenting that database. Maybe they're um, a plug. A, a, a quick plug for Thursday's uh, webinar is maybe they were assigned to Brivity Market Reports. Maybe they viewed those Bri Brivity Market Reports or the significant majority has never actually clicked through. So I see zero act act um, activity on those. Maybe they're assigned to um, a Brivity Listing Alert. Um, and maybe they're looking at homes and maybe they're not looking at homes. I went through a couple of different sources. I was able to come up with about 3,500 um, people that I had names, majority uh, of addresses, telephone numbers, and all emails. So I had 3,500 emails within my database. So here's what I did. I asked them one simple question, and that is, um, are you thinking of buying or selling in the next 12 months? It was just very, very basic. And I use SurveyMonkey to do that. 
Um, so this way it wasn't uh, yeah. overtly salesy. It also had the ability to make it through some of their spam filters that I might be on because it's yeah. coming through SurveyMonkey. Yeah. Um, and I just asked that basic question. And if they said no, then I said, thank you for your time. If they said yes, question was, um, have your plans changed due to current events? Um, and then if they said uh, yes, they had, then I just wanted to clarify how their plans might have changed. Now, from all of that, 3,500, I had at least a couple of hundred that responded yes or no. And out of all of those, uh, 25 responded, yes, they're still thinking of doing something within the next 12 months. Right. So now, now the responsibility is on me then to right. say, how do I communicate those to those people? Now, in my case, I did it under the guise. This was my second one. I did one in uh, February and I did one just this last week, actually. Um, I did it under the guise, legitimately under the guise of we're doing a market survey. I just want to know what's going on, you know. So I can't come hard at those that said yes with the right. sales message because then that completely invalidates um, the the nature that I knocked on their door about. You know, you don't Thanks. want to be bait and switch used car salesperson. So interesting, great, great question to ask. I like that leading question. It's just a simple question mm -hmm. um, with no real call to action aside from answering this question. But right. the answer. Yeah. The answer to that question brings you a lot of value and it helps those that are interested bubble right up. Well, that's right. right. And, and to, in order to maintain the integrity of the question and or, in order to maintain the integrity of the survey, my yeah. intention is indeed to collect the responses and uh, you know publish it to those that responded um, and then also to those that didn't. Now, there is some intelligence to be gained from there, but... Um, um, you know, there's just some additional information to be mined from that. So nice, nice. All right. So um, speaking of turds, <laughs> Randy, we're talking about garbage in, garbage out. So uh, as you mentioned, you know, when we're digging the database, our backyard database, we're going to see some uh, some turds. We're going to see some garbage, and we need to make sure that garbage is dealt with. You can't shove the garbage aside because it's going to still be there. Uh, every time we try to dig through that database. So manage your garbage, make sure you're removing people. Um, uh, just real quick, Bob, tell us a little bit about, uh, are you unsubscribing people? Do you trash them? Do you archive them? How do you manage the garbage? If they tell me to blank off or whatever, it's trash. If gotcha. they tell me that they've just purchased a home, then I'll put them on a market report. If they tell me they're not looking for five years, I'll, I'll lessen the amount of times that I'm going to communicate with them based on their response of where they are. Nice. So you're listening to their response. Absolutely. Yeah. Because Great. I look at it. I, I don't want to be a salesman. I've, I've lost sales because I'm not a salesman, but I've gained sales because I'm not a salesman. So I'd rather look at it that way. And so if somebody says, contact me in a year, I'll contact them in six months. Just a simple question. But if they, again, their responses tells me how frequently I'm going to get in touch with them. Randy? I say it's uh, very easy to get into my database, very hard to get out of my database. <laughs> um, and that's the, that's the value of the segmentation and deciding how hot are they. And then yeah. I can spend as much money as I possibly can on those that are the hottest. And, right. you know, it costs very little for me to put them on. Um, uh, a listing alert or a market report to keep those dripping basically I like that it's easy to get in my database it's hard to get out mm -hmm. okay we're just about done folks I want two to three things that uh, we talked about that you're gonna put into action right away I'm gonna give you about a minute to bring that to us I want to also take uh, take the time to thank Randy and Bob for your expertise you guys were great uh, panelists and thank you so much for all the information that you provided uh, me and our audience and we're going to be coming back to uh, this presentation or, or to um, uh, we'll be bringing uh, Randy back on next week for our um, latest presentation we'll bring that up here so you guys can see that one and we're going to hopefully uh, see you guys there <clears throat> And I'm going to share that with you right now. It's a doubling down on market report. So you can just register at that bit.ly link.
Thanks again, gentlemen, for your time and your expertise. Until next time, we appreciate it. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, continue to arrive so that you can thrive in uh, today's market. We appreciate it. Hope you have an amazing day. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Kevin. All right. Thank you. Thank you.